On a night that resembled hockey in May, this may not be the kind of third period Igor Shesterkin will want to remember. 2-2 headed to the third. A long-distance goal from Ryan Lomberg was the difference. 4-2 the final. Panthers over the Rangers here at the Garden. Inside our Delta MSG studios from the Garden, alongside Steve Aliquette, I'm John Giannone. It was the kind of night we expected from two of the three best teams in the NHL, but not the kind of mo difference-making moment that we saw. Yes, yeah, so look, I'm looking at the big picture too, where you want to measure yourself against the best, and it's not just your overall team and gameplay, but it's the individual play in these moments. Now, Igor has a moment that he's not going to be happy about, and I thought Panarin also had a lot of those moments in this game as well. Their star player, their top scorer, Reinhardt, had a night, mm -hmm. and Artemi Panarin didn't. And in the third period, Shesterkin had maybe his worst moment of the season. And you lose a hockey game. And that's, I don't dislike the overall game because the Rangers came out in the first period. They got the lead. They gave the lead back. They tied it up. They, they showed a lot of moxie in this game. There's not a lot that you can take away from this game and say, oh, boy, we really got to you know, rebuild this squad before the postseason. Yeah. Th this is interesting, too, though, because April, they're, they're not playing any of the top 10 teams in April. They're playing top 10 teams five more times this month in March. So they'll have five more looks against Boston, Winnipeg, Colorado, another against Florida. Those games help. But this was just the first one of a, of a test of five more. And I, again, I like the game. I just think a couple of top guys didn't have some good moments. And a, a couple of division games thrown in in what is kind of a March madness for the Rangers as well. And it doesn't start well here on uh, home ice. They lose Saturday in Toronto. They lose tonight 4-2 the final. Lots to digest off of what happened in those 60 minutes. Let's hear from Chris Kreider, who tied the game at two. He's inside the Rangers dressing room, Michelle Jingris, with the interview. What'd you make of this one? Uh, not a lot of space. For your first period, kind of feeling each other out a little bit. Um, I think we had uh, some opportunities throughout the game to potentially take a hold of it. Um, I think that we gave them a little bit too much time and space at times, but. Um, and any success we had was from checking them tightly and closing and advancing pucks quickly. So, What did they do well in the third period? I think they held you to six shots on goal. Just did anything feel different? Um, I think they were really committed to getting pucks behind us and making us play on our own end. I think we had a little more trouble getting through the neutral zone in that period. Chris, sometimes we throw around playoff atmosphere. But you mentioned the tight checking, the intensity. Like, did like, this feel like a, a real heavyweight matchup to you? I feel like a couple good teams, but I thought the game down in Florida was uh, ramped up a little bit more. Um, like I said, it kind of felt like both teams are kind of waiting, a little more cautious. Um, the game down in Florida felt like it was probably a little bit more run and gun, um, but no, it was two good teams. Did playing a little bit more cautiously hinder you kind of finding your flow at all, or did you feel like it wasn't, that didn't really make an impact? Well, I think that they generated chances at times off it, right? Um, and we didn't close, we didn't take away their time and space, they were able to make plays. Had a couple power play goals tonight collectively, just how do you feel about the process of that unit? Um, I think that's a good word is process, right? So I think our process was better. A uh, team that forced us to play a little quicker and uh, we're able to cash in on a couple of opportunities, but yeah, um, I think that mentality of kind of moving the puck, releasing the pressure, releasing the pressure, and then attacking the net and just kind of getting in that flow is that's what made us successful and what will continue to make us successful. Thoughts from Chris Kreider. I had mentioned on the broadcast that Matthew Kachuk came over by where I stand between the benches right after the national anthem and said biggest game of the year. That's yeah. how Florida was approaching this. When you listen to Chris talk after the game, his words, his tone of voice, does it kind of speak to the fact that the Rangers might have been thinking about it the same way? I think so, John. He sounds down. Mm. You know, I don't know if that game represents your feelings that much. You can always say that, hey, our guy gave up a bad goal. You know, and you can still say and rely on we had a pretty strong. I guess this, the third period might really upset people in the room because they don't like the fact they only had six shots on goal and none of real consequence or force like they did in the first two periods. But 
a tough one to digest. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if overall the team feels that down about that. I, I can't wait to hear what other guys say as well. Yeah. I don't think it's as bad as the way Kreis just laid it out for us. Yeah, this was a game, of course, built between the Rangers, who have been among the top teams all season, and the Florida Panthers, who came into tonight's game, the best team in the NHL, most wins, most points. And... When you watch, you kind of figured it was going to be a night of stars. You mentioned Artemi Panarin held to one assist, but Sam Reinhardt, who has been the star of stars offensively for the Panthers, did his part with two goals. Yeah, because he plays in playoff hockey ice in the middle. He's always there, and he's in coverage, and he pushes off coverage. On the first goal, which is a power play goal, off the rush, it is an all-star play by Barkov to make this happen. It's only their sixth goal off the rush on the power play. That's not something they look for. But you can see the push right here off Fox. That's how he gets that separation. And look, you're always looking for room in the postseason in the middle of the ice. He's a postseason scorer that way. If you watch somebody score a certain way in the regular season, you can say, all right, well, that's not a goal you can keep or one that's going to be working in the spring. That guy's a spring goal scorer. You can see right. the way that he's able to find that ice. For sure, yeah. Goals 43 and 44 on the season. And the only player in the NHL with more goals than Sam Reinhart is... Austin Matthews. So he had a night. The Rangers lose it 4 2 the final. Let's get some more reaction from the Ranger dressing room. Vincent Trocek after the game. Yeah. We're playing, we're playing well, I think. We match up against anybody. Um, it's just a matter of us, I think, getting, being able to change the way we're, we're doing things whenever something's not working. And I think tonight it was, they did a really good job of staying on top of us. And whenever teams are able to do that, you got to make sure you find a different way to play offensive zone time. And we didn't do a great job of that tonight. With the tight checking kind of atmosphere that you mentioned, did it feel like like the intensity as far as the way that you guys were able to handle that? For, for the most part, you were right there with them. Intensity was. Yeah, and, and as far as like the tight checking, like it didn't seem like there's a whole lot of space for either team. Yeah, I think first two periods, especially, there wasn't many chances either way. And that's how playoff hockey usually goes. It's very tight checking and not a lot of room. You do have the next few days. How, how um, current do you, do you stay? Are, are you checking your, you know, your social media all the time to see if, if you guys did anything? What, what, is, what are the next few days like for you? Uh, well, it's rare that you get four days in the middle of the season um, without a game. So personally, yeah. I mean, take some time to get some rest and heal any bruises that you have. And obviously, if we make a trade or if something happens around this time of year, everybody's aware of it. Um, you just got to take whatever it is in stride and um, roll with the punches, I guess. And we're going to be talking about that because this was the Rangers' last game before the trade deadline on Friday at 3 o'clock. But first things first, let's talk about the pivotal moment in the game because, Steve, it came at 6-11 of the third period, game tied at 2. Ryan Lomberg into the zone, not necessarily a goal scorer, only yeah. four on the season before he took about a 40-foot wrist shot. What happened? Okay, so I think that... Shesterkin didn't like the fact that Truba went down on one knee because there was a bit of a stare after the goal. That's my impression of it. And what I see on the goal is that from that distance, a hundred times out of a hundred, you want your goalie to make that save. And it's at a distance where Truba to a certain degree allows him to take it. And it does go through his legs, but it's not a long enough distance away where you can't still pick it up and it's not a big enough screen where it would hinder your movement. And I can tell you this, I know from covering Shesterkin for the last three years, I've always referred to him as the money goalie because when the score is tied in the third period, he has the best save percentage in the NHL. So for him to give that one up, it hurts him more than it hurts anybody in the locker room. But it's just very uncharacteristic for a bad goal to go in on him at that time. Like, he's going to let in bad goals. Every goal he does. But the timing of it, it's catastrophic mm -hmm. to the goalie. It hurts yeah. deep. And the deflation in the building and on the bench was palpable after that 3-2 goal. Empty netter made it 4-2. That was the final. Rangers' six-game home winning streak is over. Rangers lose for the third time in four games after their overall 10-game winning streak.